So this lecture is about an uh, inventory model recap. So we've spent a couple weeks thinking about inventory models um, and quite a variety of inventory models. And so now let's step back and think about them kind of more holistically um, and systematically. Um, and so just as a reminder, uh, inventory serves a number of purposes. There's a reason that a company wants to have inventory. Um, those are first to exploit economies of scale. So if you're thinking about it costs you money every time you get that shipment, you want to exploit that you shouldn't get one at a time. And so this is exactly what the EOQ model is doing. If there's a cost to order, oftentimes it's transportation costs. And so because transportation costs um, are not linear in the sense that you would pay approximately the same amount to have 200 things in a shipment or container um, as one thing. Um, and so you wanna exploit that, you wanna get more at a time, uh, and that more at a time means you have inventory. So that's, that's the EOQ um, reason to have inventory. Um, you also want to decouple or separate various parts of the production process. And so if you think about production taking some time, Inventory is used so that you have built up inventory to meet demand. And if something happens with your manufacturing process, you aren't uh, immediately impacted. And right now in the situation we're going through with COVID, uh, this is a good example is that if uh, manufacturers have built up inventory, we have stuff to sell even if they're not able to produce. Um, the third is that we want to decouple the selling process, basically. So we don't know exactly demand, and so we need inventory there because demand is stochastic. Um, so we have safety stock. This is where the safety stock comes in, um, is the fact that we will have fluctuations in demand, and inventory serves as that buffer between what we expect and what happens. And so that's where safety stock is coming in. And then the last one is to hedge against inflation, which we really haven't explicitly talked about um, in this class, um, but that is another reason that you could have inventory. So there are many, many reasons to have inventory, and inventory is not inherently a bad thing. It serves important, critical um, purposes in the supply chain. However, inventory is not cheap, okay? Inventory is typically one of the company's most expensive assets, as a reminder, inventory from a company's perspective is they've invested in this stuff. They have paid for this stuff and yet they haven't sold it yet. And so the issue here is you usually hear a lot of people say we want to reduce inventory, reduce inventory, reduce inventory. Um, we don't want to have extra inventory, but we do need inventory. Um, and so I will hope something you walk away from this class is Inventory serves a number of purposes. Your goal as a supply chain manager, industrial engineer, is to have the right amount of inventory to serve these purposes. Um, so a key insight from inventory theory is that we do not simply seek to reduce inventories. Our goal or our objective function should not be minimize inventory. If that's the case, we'd have zero inventory and we wouldn't be able to meet our demands, we would be paying too much in transportation costs, um, we wouldn't, we'd have lots of stock outs, you know, so the goal is not to just reduce inventory. Um, instead, we should ensure we have the right amount of inventory. So we do want the minimum investment that meets our requirements. So you can think about from an optimization perspective, we do want to minimize costs. However, cost could not only be the inventory cost. So when you think about the EOQ model, when we had the total cost equation, we had inventory holding costs in that function. But we also had ordering costs. And when you think about the news vendor model, we had definitely, um, we don't want a lot of extra inventory left over at the end of the selling period. So that was in our objective function, but so was the fact that we want to make sure we make sales, right? And so we need to make sure there's both of those things in our objective function. Um, and so the key takeaway is you should not just start pulling inventory out of your supply chain. Many companies may have too much inventory. Um, they may have not optimized for their inventory policies. However, we shouldn't just pull it out. What you should do instead is think about what causes you to have this inventory. 
And what causes you to have this inventory is then the levers, the things we can change. And by changing those levers, we then can reduce inventory. So to expand upon what do I mean by these levers, uh, what are levers that can reduce inventory? So to start out with, you could ask yourself, I need to reduce inventory. Well, then you could ask yourself, how can I reduce the variability of demand? If I reduce the variability of demand, then what happens? Well, if I reduce the variability of demand or variability of my lead times, that reduces our safety stop. And by reducing variability, we need less inventory. Um, we could also ask yourself, I really need to get less inventory. You shouldn't just pull inventory out. Instead, you should think about how could I reduce supply lead times. So if I could somehow reduce how long it takes for my products to get there, then I don't need as much inventory. And so by reducing lead times, we reduce the reorder point, which reduces how much inventory holding costs we have. And you could also think, okay, I have too much inventory. Um, I need to reduce my setup or my ordering costs. So if we could think about reducing S in the EOQ or the QR model, uh, that would also reduce our inventory costs. And so the key here is the levers to reduce inventory are things like reducing variability, reducing lead time, reducing setup costs. Those all reduce inventory, um, but that's different than leaving the setup cost as it is and pulling inventory out of the system. That is not going. All right, so the other key thing that you should get away kind of more holistically is, yes, inventory is a purpose, but these are different purposes. And so what I have displayed here is the QR model. So just as a reminder, um, we order Q when it hits R, um, and then we keep having demand and we do that, okay? So you could think about the, the this part of, um, the inventory that is associated with the EOQ model, sometimes called cycle inventory. Um, and the reason we have an average inventory of Q over two um, is that uh, there's a, a cost to place an order. So every time we place an order, independent of how many we order, we have to pay transportation costs. And so if we wanna reduce uh, our inventory costs um, here, we want to think about not um, um, we, we hold inventory because we want to decrease the number of orders we have. So inventory goes up as the number of orders placed go down. So how can we um, increase how many orders we want to place? Well, we want to make it cheaper <laughs> to place an order. Um, and so we hold inventory for that reason because costs of placing an order um, happen. You can also see on the bottom half, you have safety inventory or sometimes called safety stock. Uh, the reason we have the safety inventory is because we don't know demand exactly. So demand is stochastic. And so if we wanna reduce the safety stock portion of why we're holding inventory, how do we do that? Well, the key thing here is that safety stock is a function of lead time demand variance. So standard deviation of lead time demand is what influences safety stock. And so how do we reduce lead time demand variance? Well, one thing is we could reduce um, our error in our forecast so we can make better forecasts. That would reduce our lead time demand um, variance. We could also reduce the lead time. So how long from when I place an order to when it shows up, that would also uh, reduce lead time demand variance, which would then reduce safety stock. We could also reduce um, the number of stocking locations. So if we have stuff in many locations, um, it's a higher chance that we don't have it where we need it, and therefore we have more variance. Um, and so centralizing inventory also reduces lead time demand variance. So again, there are different reasons we hold inventory, and parts of these models uh, capture different aspects of the reason for holding inventory. So just as a reminder, we went through a number of inventory models this semester. Um, we started with kind of the basic ones that assume deterministic demand. That's the EOQ model. And then we, we did a few um, adjustments. So the EOQ model with lead time greater than zero and the EOQ model with quantity discount. Um, and then we, we said, okay, most of the time demand is not deterministic. So let's consider stochastic or probabilistic demand. 
And that's where we did the QR model. And I will talk about this in a couple slides, but there's a relationship between the EOQ and the QR model. And specifically, the QR model captures that the R, the reorder point, needs to have a buffer. And that buffer is known as safety stop. Um, so we talked about uh, different variations of the QR model and the impact of different things, like the lead time. And if we have certain or uncertain lead time, um, and then safety stock if we have centralized versus decentralized stocking locations. The other stochastic model we looked at is the news vendor model. Um, and I'll talk again in a couple slides about what's the difference between the QR and the news vendor. They both are stochastic demand, but they're applicable in very different situations. All right, so first let's start with what's the relationship between the EOQ model and the QR model. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, this is a slide taken from D1, is the EOQ model um, assumes we have deterministic demand. So what does that mean in this graph? That means the de demand, which is represented by this red line, is flat, it's stable, and we know it exactly. And so that's a, a huge assumption. Um, and so in the traditional EOQ model, we assume inventory shows up right away. However, in this case, we're consuming, assuming that there is a lead time. So when I place my order here, it doesn't actually show up until here, okay? So there's some finite amount of time that it takes to get our product. And so if you think about that, then we do need to order earlier than when our inventory level hits zero. And that's what the reorder point does. And so as a reminder, the Q tells us how much, so how big should this blue line be? Uh, that's what the Q is doing. And the R is telling us when. And so it's telling us when to order. So when should I place this order for Q? Well, I should place it when in the EOQ model, because we assume deterministic demand, we should place it exactly when it'll show up so that my inventory hits zero and all of a sudden it instantaneously shows up. So we can figure that out. We can back um, into that by figuring out basically how much demand happens during the lead time. So we know the demand per period and we know the lead time and number of periods, then we know D times L. So D times L would be how much demand occurs during lead time and I wanna place my order when my inventory level hits that so that then I'm consuming this at the same time parallel the product is arriving, okay? And so that is the EOQ model. So what is the relationship between the EOQ model and the QR model? The key difference here is the QR model considers probabilistic demand. So uh, we have a similar graph, except as you notice here, the demand is unfortunately not a straight line. It's probabilistic. That's what this squiggly lines are supposed to represent. That means we don't know exactly the demand. Instead, we have a mean, the average or the expected demand um that's happening and so again we have a lead time on the bottom here but the key thing here is we only know the expected demand during lead time we don't know exactly the demand during lead time and therefore because there's uncertainty we want a buffer and that buffer is the safety stock and so if you think about the reorder point uh the first parts of this is very similar to our eoq model except i added the word expected because we used to know exactly now we just have an estimate so we have what we think will happen, but because we're not sure, we add a buffer, and that's the safety stop. And so you could think about the relationship between the EOQ model and the QR model is that the EOQ model has uh, the uncertainty is zero. And so because the uncertainty is zero, you need zero safety stop. So if you remember what is influences safety stop is it's the standard deviation of lead time demand times some service level. Um, and so the standard deviation of lead time demand in the EOQ model is zero, therefore the safety stock goes away. But in the QR model, we need that because we only have an estimate for demand. So um, you could think of, therefore, the QR model is kind of a more general um, model than the EOQ model. And you may say, well, why are we even studying the EOQ model? Is that how do we set Q in the EOQ model is exactly... Um, is using the EOQ model equations. And so just as a reminder, um, the QR model is a policy that if the inventory level is below R, we order Q. Um, and so how much, how much to order is used exactly like the EOQ model. So we use the square root of 2SD over H. 
Um, and so that is chosen to balance the frequency of ordering, so the setup cost and the inventory holding cost. The R is chosen to balance, again, holding cost, but we have a cost that we may stock out because demand is uncertain. And so the cost of not having it um, available if someone needs to buy it versus the cost of holding the inventory. And so that's what R is um, doing. And just as a reminder, um, the reorder point controls the probability of stockouts by establishing safety stock. So as reorder points go up, it means we have extra or more safety stock, which means we have a less chance, a lower probability of stocking out. Um, and remember, safety stock is a function of lead time demand and standard deviation. Um, we should set Q star, the order quantity, so how many units, like the EOQ model, and we should set the reorder point R star um, using a given cycle service level, or we could calculate that if we know the cost of not having something to the cost of holding. And there's a relationship between the reorder point, the expected demand during lead time, and safety stock. All right, so now let's, let's compare the two uncertain models that we um, explored in this class. So remember, we, we explored the QR model, which I just went over, and the news vendor model. And so both of them, uh, a similar aspect of them is both demand is uncertain in both of these problems. However, they are used for different purposes. So the QR model is used when you have the ability to place multiple replenishment orders. So you could think about every time I hit R, I order Q, and I'm able to do that over time. And the reason I keep able to do that over time is because my inventory is assumed the same value. So I'm not assuming I'm losing value um, of that inventory. So when does that make sense? That makes sense in a lot of like retail situations. So think of a grocery store. A grocery store would likely use the QR model. So every week, every day, uh, they get shipments, right? So they are fine and then they say, what should I get shipped? Well, they look and say, what should I order from my supplier or my warehouse? That happens for any product that hit R, right? So they check and they have like a minimum point and that triggers that I should order Q. And so that happens over time. And so we keep getting replenishment orders every day, every week um, when that happens. Um, on the other hand, the news vendor also has um, uncertain demand. However, when can we place an order? It's a one-time thing in the, the traditional news vendor, which we studied in this class, is we can only place one replenishment order. And that replenishment order has to happen before our selling period. So thinking about uh, a news vendor selling newspapers, they buy newspapers at the beginning of the day before they start selling for the day. Um, and they have one opportunity to do that. Okay? And the other thing about the news vendor is inventory is not uh, assumed the same value at the end of the selling period. There is a loss or reduction after the selling period. So that is a key difference um, between the news vendor and the QR. So when should you use the news vendor problem? Well, you can use it when there's a single order production replenishment opportunity before the selling period. Demand during the selling period is uncertain, but there's this too much, too little uh, challenge. So if demand exceeds the order quantity, we have underage cost. Oftentimes that's sales um, loss. But if demand is less than the order uh, quantity, uh, we have overage cost. And we have leftover inventory, and that inventory is not worth as much. So this may be that we need to mark down things. So in a lot of uh, retail situations, things go on sale. And so that means uh, later, if I bought too much, I have to mark them down and that's a cost um, to the retailer. And just as a reminder, how do you then set how much should I order? How do you set Q star? It depends on this relationship between overage cost and underage cost. And it also depends on the um, CDF, the cumulative distribution function of our demand during selling period. As a reminder, the critical value, or it's also helping us set our service level over the selling period, is the cost of underage um, over the ratio of cost of overage plus underage. Um, and if we set Q star using that critical ratio, um, it will maximize our expected profit. Um, and it balances these costs of too much and too little. 